Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airburst Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today's gonna to be my official I have COVID video. That's right, about five days ago, I was diagnosed with COVID, so I've been quarantined and moved everything to my bedroom. Uh, got my little office set up so I can work from home. Got my Airbus stuff behind me, but I really haven't been able to do much or really almost even get out of bed for the last you know, four days. Um, I've been nursing this very severe headache and fatigue. Now, I feel very fortunate that that's all I've gotten from COVID. I know a lot of people out there um, are experiencing a lot worse than what I am, so I feel very fortunate. But today, I am feeling a little bit better, so I'm going to attempt to do a video with you guys or for you guys. So what I'd like to do with you guys today is some freehand flames, add a little twist of pearl to it, some candy 2-0 at the end of it. With that, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is dull this panel down before we go to apply any airbrush paint to it because it's very shiny. It is sprayed with a gloss black and you can see the reflection of the light in it. And you'll see when we dull it down that you'll probably barely be able to even see that. All right, so we're gonna be using to dull this panel down as a scuff pad. This one here is a P360, I'm not even quite sure what that means, but it's a smoothing pad and what it is recommended for is final scuffing before primer coats. Okay, so that, as you take mine, you just fold it in half and you just wanna take off this dull finish. I'll try it without folding it in half. And you wanna make sure you get all the way to the edges. Um, I do that a lot. Well, I used to do that a lot where I'd scuff it out and I would kind of miss around the edges. And when I was going to paint, the paint would scratch off real easy. Wherever you miss or if you miss, your paint's not going to adhere very well to that spot. Trust me, been there, done that. All right, so off camera, I finished scuffing that down. As you can see, very dull now. The, you can still see the light ring behind where the camera is, but not so much anymore. You'll see if there's any shiny spots left. You just want to make sure that there's no shiny spots left. If you do, just go back and hit them again. Now, I do have my rubber gloves on now. I um, should have had them on from the beginning. Uh, when it's off camera, I put them on because as you're doing this, anytime, you know, your oils from your fingers and stuff are going to get on this and you're going to see them. If I, if I was to put my finger right down on it, you're going to see the fingerprint. You don't want that. You want to make sure that this surface is clean. So once you scuff it, um, I come by with a nice terry cloth and uh, wipe it all down. If you have any wax and grease remover, you can hit it with that, um, a mild cleaner. Again, make sure your panel's really dry. So once you get it to this point, now it's ready for paint. So what I'm gonna be using is, I'm gonna be using a freehand shield by Art Tool. It is by Gerald Menendez. It's from the FX2 uh, series of stencils. And this one is called Organic Net. And I use this one a lot. I really like this on the background. So what I have is some opaque white loaded up in my airbrush here. And you can just spray this thing around and you can see how it's just a texture template. You can get different effects by holding it away, getting a softer effect. I like it a little bit more up close.
All right, now that I feel like I kind of got this all mapped in where I want it with the opaque white, just so you know, I switched over. I, I told you in some of my other videos, I like to mix a cocktail of uh, uh, reducers. It's getting a little bit of uh, dry paint spinning. So what I did was, uh, based on my conditions here in the room, I guess that wasn't working really well. I tried adding a little bit more of the uh, 4011 and it's still, still, and I was still getting the same thing. So I added a little bit of the 4013 to it and it seemed to correct the problem. So again, I just play around with things like that just to, till I get it to work the way I want it to work. Now, with that said, we're gonna be using the Wicked Pearl White. Okay, now, it's very, very important that you shake these up super well. I have a little test tube uh, mixer over there that I, I mix it on, and I also give it a good handshake. They're very, very hard to mix. I mean, you really, you can't just give these things a couple shakes and, and you're good. You gotta make sure it's mixed up very, very well. Okay, so I got some White Pearl loaded up here on my gun. Um, I mixed it with the 4011 because that's what it recommends right on the bottle. I'm going to use my map or my road map here to start laying the pearl in over my opaque white. Just want to mention that the pearl is super transparent and you might be able to see the difference in the shading right here. The pearl is slightly different shade than the white. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-hit all my highlights. What I got mixed up with my gun right now is the Wicked Gold Pearl. I'm going to hit the outer edges of the flame with the gold and leave the hot spots with the pearl white. Well, there you have it. Um, I'm going to come back. We're going to spray a candy over this, the Candy 2.0, with my new gun. We'll see how it looks. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to put some candy on this panel. And before you put candy on a panel, unless you really know what candy color you like or you want because you've used them before, I recommend you do a test panel. So that's exactly what I did here. I got tequila yellow, I got blood red, and I got a magenta. And after spraying them out and seeing what I think I might like on my panel, I think I'm going to go with the blood red. So what I did was um, I pre-mixed up some blood red right here in a cup. Now, what's important about this Candy 2.0 is that you mix it correctly. And what you can mix that this Candy 2.0 with is this UVLS Clear or the 4030 Balancing Clear. I prefer to go with the UVLS Clear. I just like it. It's a newer product and... I just really like it. I like it for this, and I, we're also going to clear this project with the UVLS Clear when we're done here. But the important thing to note here is that it's a three to one mix. It's three parts of this UVLS Clear, and if you're using the 4030 Balancing Clear, it's also three to one, three parts of the 4030. And it would be one part of the Candy 2.0, and because we're gonna be spraying through a gun that has a 0.5 needle and not a bigger gun like with a 1.2 or a 1.4 full-size gun, if that was the case, it would be, they recommend 10% of the 4011. In this case, because we're through a 0.5, it's going to be 15 to 20%. So I put about 20% in of the 4011 into my mix. Now, the other key part here is that once you mix it up, you let it sit for a good 10 minutes. The other thing I recommend and I'm going to be using is a, uh, a screen. I've noticed some of my candies can get clumpy. For some reason, I don't know if it's because they're sitting too long, but I don't normally strain my uh, regular paints, my regular, you know, wicked paints or, or illustration colors when I'm doing a project. But when it comes to the candies, I highly recommend that you strain through. And what we're going to be putting this candy in today is, what I'm really excited about, and I will do a full review on it, but not today, not in this video, is my Creos P290 Sport a 0.5 needle. It has the fan tip on it that shoots like a regular spray gun. It also comes with an oval tip, but for this particular application, I want the fan spray. It comes with a nice large cup to hold my candies and my clears. And that's exactly what I got this gun for, for spraying my candies and clears on small projects like this. So with that, let's get started. 
All right, so I got my respirator on here because I'm indoors. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting on some nice light coats. You don't want to lay this on too heavy. You want to build it up slowly. Here we go. All right, now that we got about six coats of the Kenny Blood Red on, we're going to put a clear on here. We're going to use the UVLS Createx Clear, as I told you earlier. So what you want to do with this, because we're going through a 0.5, we're going to be using, again, the uh, P290 by Creos. Because it's a 0.5 needle, you're going to want to thin this down probably about 10 to 15 percent. Okay, not much. If you're going through a bigger gun, you could probably shoot this straight through the gun without... You know, if you're going with a, a 1.2, uh, 0.4, you know, 1.2, 1.4, you can shoot that right through the gun without thinning it down. I'd probably still add 10% reducer. It's just what I do. Yeah, just like with the Candy 2.0, I like to put my 10, 15% reducer in here. In this case, I probably even push it to almost like 20. Um, I like to let that sit a little bit, 5, 10 minutes, so it all acclimates together. All right, with that, let's shoot some clear. So before I get started, put the respirator on. What I'd like to say about this is that when you're applying this, you probably want to be about six to eight inches away. I'm going to be probably about six inches away. You want a nice medium wet coat. You want to almost see like a milky uh, sheen to it. We're going to let that disappear between coats. We don't want to put a wet on wet coat with this product. You want a, a medium uh, coat, wet coat. Let that milkiness show, let it evaporate or dissipate before you put the next coat on. If you don't see that milkiness, your coat's too dry and you're just going to build up a bunch of dry layers. Too wet, it's going to run. So this product takes a little bit of practice. So let's give it a try. Wanted to show you a shot before I turn the light ring on um, of the finished product. So it may be appear a little dark, but overall pretty satisfied with it. There you are. Like I said, overall pretty satisfied with it. If I said I didn't have a hard time with the UVLS clear, I'd be lying. It took a little bit of trial and error. They talk about over atomizing the clear, and I think that's what was happening when I was at 30 psi. So what I did was. I was at 30 PSI to begin with and about 10% reduction with the 4011. That was not working for me. I was getting that dry spray. I wasn't getting that milky consistency sheen that they, the Createx recommends. I knocked the pressure down to 20 PSI and I went to about 30% reduction and I started getting some really nice flow. Now, it is very difficult to keep it consistent. Even though you're doing 50% overlap, I found it a little bit on a difficult side to work with. Um, a project like this, such as this, I normally would just take out uh, a can of uh, Krylon Clear and clear my artwork. Or I'd take out a small gun and i use some automotive clear. But I did want to give the UVLS uh, a try because I really do like the product. I like it that it goes in the Candy 2 O's. I've sprayed with it like that before. Again, I think with a little practice and a little bit more tweaking, I can get better results. Overall, not bad. Again, a little difficult to work with, I think, until you get used to it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from it. If you did, please consider subscribing. Leave me a couple comments, good or bad. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links down below for all the products I use in this video. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.